Hi everyone, Don Coppins. I'm the Global Vice President of Strategic Account Management for Televerti. Tony Kaplan, uh, the Chief Marketing Officer here at Insight ECRM. Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, appreciate your background and your expertise as a Chief Marketing Officer for Insightly. What we wanted to talk about today is, um, you know, in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, you know, as a marketer, what are, what are three kind of tactics that marketers can use to stay top of, mind, top of mind with their customers and their clients? I think there's, um, I think first of all, given the environment, uh, I think we have to have a um, shift in our mindset as to how, what engagement means, because all too often um, we're always thinking about um, how do I identify interest and how do I garner demand? And that's not necessarily the right thing to do right now. Even myself, I'm on the, the, the receiving end of vendors pinging me to talk about what the next budget is for the next coming, coming, coming quarter. Am I going to extend it? And I'm sort of going, you know what, time out. This might not be the right time for having this conversation, but I certainly will have a conversation with you about how business is going and how we're feeling, uh, you know, what we do with you as a vendor is, is, is working. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think people have to have the same mindset as well as they're on the, on the other end of the delivery end or on the requesting end of that conversation. Um, so what I, I talk about is um, shelving the hard sell. I think that's the first thing people got to do. You got to just step back and really assess what the right thing to do is on a by case basis. Some companies are requesting a lot more support. Not everybody's feeling the pinch, although most people are. Um, but you know, you've got to look at everything on a by case basis and maybe your mar market or your customers are in that particular situation where they might need more help, but definitely on a by case basis. But sure. Sell, shell of the hard sell. And that's something that can actually benefit us when we all come out and the lights go back on. Um, to have that mindset and maybe put programs in place that, uh, you know, engage in that way. Um, I think that the, the second thing is, um, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be empathetic, uh, sort of similar to the hard sell uh, piece, but I guess be there as a relationship um, builder um, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. People want relationships, not transactions these days. And this is almost a forcing function uh, for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third thing to think about is how can you be, be helpful? So this whole idea of, um, uh, of a stimulus package, well, a lot of people don't actually know what's going on. And there's a lot of de details, a lot of devils in those details. And mm -hmm. it's not always as, uh, as straightforward as people think. So if you have any better insight, something like that is very, very helpful. So all these things sort of play together, I guess. I agree. So, that's good feedback. You know, by nature, salespeople are kind of people people, right? They do their best work face to face or close to it. Um, but what happens when they can't be face to face anymore? What are some things that you guys are implementing to help salespeople, you know, kind of navigate through their customer and, and, and prospect relationships? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's we're interesting. I'm not sure, you know, that every industry is different. Mm -hmm. um, we're a technology company. Uh, we build software to help companies connect with their customers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think what we do is, is vital. Um, we don't only use our own software, we use other software. Like we use the, the, the conferencing software we're using right now um, that now everybody is using. And um, it's so interesting to see, uh, you know, how, 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 what elevation Zoom got in the, in the news and then the beating it got because there was, you know, uh, some sort of breach of security or whatever. But it's just, it's indicative of just what are people doing now? The face-to-face -face in the pure sense of the word has changed to a face-to-face -face and a technical sort of virtual uh, way. So I do still think uh, that there's a great opportunity to be face-to-face. It's a, it's, it's a fact, it's just things have become very uh, a, a different type of engagement. Um, and it is, it's almost, um, you're getting to the point fast, having your conversation you're supposed to have, and you go on, you continue to your, to your work. So in many cases, 
uh, you, you can be a lot more productive and you can still be face to face through technology. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the physical meeting and greeting that that's gone. Yeah. And yeah. if nothing else, everything that we're facing right now is a learning opportunity uh, to really assess what works and what doesn't. And, um, you know, it's, 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 of course, we would never wish anything, anything like this again to happen, but uh, we are here and, and let's see if there are learnings we can get out of it. And I think this is one of them, that face-to-face -face engagement is, uh, is very, very important. It's yeah. just in a different way. Yeah. What kind of tools are you guys using? Uh, tell yeah. me, are you using Zoom or? We're using Zoom. Um, one of our original investors, Emergence, it's a portfolio company for them. Uh, so, um, not that they force us to do anything. Emergence are not that type of a venture firm, but uh, we do like to support the uh, the portfolio companies in the ecosystem. So we use uh, we use Zoom. Uh, we also uh, we use Slack. It's a great way for our teams to maintain collaborative collaboration and collabor collaborative collaborative uh, um, uh, just sense of you know being connected um, with everyone because it is obviously an immediate way to do that and immediately to share things. So it's very, very collaborative. Um, and, you know, we use obviously our own software. Um, we use our, because we have not only our CRM, but we also have marketing automation uh, together with that. Um, and then we have the delivery piece for post-sale. It just gives us, you know, real, real, everything we need to maintain uh, those, those connections with our customers and um, maintain a good communication cadence, which we do on a regular basis. Well, business has definitely been turned upside down. I, you know, as the world kind of navigates through the operations of the current environment, do you have some best practices that you can share for businesses, business leaders, sales teams to continue moving forward and keep their teams motivated and engaged? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I think, you know, for us, I always feel that uh, communication is uh, is w one of the, the most important way to uh, motivate. It's also the source of a lot of probably ninety percent of the problems that exist within businesses. And when communication doesn't hit the mark, things go off the rails a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we just got to be better communicators. I think at the end of the day, and uh, there's no such thing as over communication. Um, I also feel that uh, it's honest communication is best received uh, because people can see uh, through that. If there's anything that's not genuine, they'll feel it. And that is particularly an issue right now. Uh, sensitivity around situations are very, very important. Uh, but I feel communication is really, really important. We, the, here's an interesting thing. Um, you know, the environment we operate in you know, we, we do a lot of things internally from a uh, sort of like a culture, I'm not saying that you can manufacture in culture, but we're very mindful of culture uh, in, in society. We hire people that fit very tightly with our, what our culture is. But uh, you've got to be mindful. You can't recreate the physical environment. You've got to rethink your current environment and see how cult your culture operates within that or people respond or react to that. And I think a sensitivity uh, for that or to that is, is really, really important. So, for example, if you do uh, have uh, happy hours, for, for example, on once a month, that may not be the right thing right now, you know, because, yeah, there is, you're just trying to create something in a physical environment, you're trying to create it virtually. Um, but it's certainly, it's, the way I would think about it and we think about it is, well, what do we do that replace that? Um, and there are things we're doing uh, throughout the org, um, like we have virtual lunch times. People can join if they want. Yeah, because there's just a lot of camaraderie that you develop and a lot of friends you you have within your your work environment, your physical environment. And we want to maintain those and sustain those because we do have a very family uh, feel within our business. Or we consider ourselves we consider ourselves the insightly family. So we try to perpetuate that type of ethos, not type of culture so a lot of it is let's not recreate exactly what we do physically but let's think outside the box and do something virtually that uh is in line with who we are as a, as a company and i think yeah. business can think th think that uh, through as well so, and a lot of it can be fun you know we can have a lot of uh, innovative thinking coming out and even that process itself is a good thing to have get people's ideas around uh, what they can do more so
I think staying connected is so important. Um, yeah. One of the things that I'm seeing more and more organizations do as well as our own is, you know, kind of brainstorming around these give back um, activities, right? How can we help people in need? What are some things that we can go out and purchase? Can we deliver meals? Things like that. Um, yeah. And that seems to get a lot of our employees engaged and motivated, it takes off the stress and the fear of everything that you're reading on the media, you know, or that you're hearing on the news. Are there some things that you can suggest that your team has been um, involved in that have been uh, successful? Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. Our, our customers, um, I think this is a testament to it. You mean, again, you've got to be humane and responsive and and you know, uh, bring, go from a, from a transactional world to a more of a human world. And our customers, we're lucky at Insightly because our customers really like us. <laughs> Whatever. That's they just, so important. They, they, we have, we have, uh, we have uh, a lot over 25,000, hit more to 30,000 uh, customers. A lot of them are small businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, about 80, 85% of our, our folks are small businesses. Our customers are small businesses. This is where we grew up. Uh, so we're very much in tune with, you know, uh, the, the human side of business. Right. Um, and um, our customers uh, reciprocate. I mean, we had a, a, a customer reach out from the UK uh, last week to me uh, directly. And I'm actually getting a lot of people reaching out to me on LinkedIn um, directly, which I get some of and not even more of, but uh, which is also indicative of that. But this particular customer uh, was in the UK and they work with the NHS, mm -hmm. so the National Health Service in the, in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And they asked us, they, they had capacity issues, we believe you can see this actually happening and playing out. They had capacity issues and processing using our CRM because they didn't have enough capacity. So the guys like, I, I, we're, we're working with the NHS, we need to be able to process uh, things you know, faster. And we're doing lots of bulk uh, updates and how, what can you do to help us? Yeah. So uh, we just double their capacity. Like, yeah. don't worry about it. We'll just double the capacity. <laughs> You've got two, 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 the ability to, to, to handle 200,000 records you know, a day. And, and I think it's things like that that are really important uh, to be, uh, you know, um, available to do and, and, and to be open to respond to. And um, on a customer level, it's very, very important because that's the type of interaction customers want. Uh, yeah. that's, a, that's a relationship and there's personality in there and there's, you know, there's, there's, there's humanity and there's help and there's, there, we're there for you, which is very much what we're all about. But then, of course, you got your, 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 local, uh, your local things. There's a lot of uh, food banks now that are, that are growing up uh, around or starting to establish around, uh, around the Bay Area that folks are driving towards. I guess it's hard to pick one out. And I know we encourage our employees uh, to be part of those activities uh, in their local areas. I think they're, they're better able to, uh, to do that uh, on an individual basis than we are necessarily as a company. But we yeah. certainly facilitate that and we're certainly there for our, for our customers. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because, you know, the small business segment has really been hit the hardest uh, from all of this. And that's your biggest market. Those are, that's your whole customer base. So um, I think what you said earlier about, you know, get, get informed about the stimulus package, be able to advise customers when they have questions about it, how it's going to help. Can you elaborate any more on that stimulus yeah. package? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's quite interesting. So we, um, we ourselves fall into the stimulus package. We're under 500 employees and um, we potentially qualify, which a lot of startups in Silicon Valley can as well. A lot of the, the venture funds, um, uh, and we have a, a couple of our investors, uh, Emergence Capital, uh, Cloud App Partners, um, and we are um, very interested because you know we're, we feel it as well. We feel the pressures and, and the ramifications of this awful this awful uh, pandemic that's gripping the world right now. And, and, and uh, we want to learn for ourselves and we're trying to, we're, we're learning. And it's quite interesting. There's a lot more, many more complexities around how did this actually happen? There's, you know, there's, there's, there's national banks, uh, there's local banks and local banks uh, work with small businesses all the time. And they have, they have thousands of small business loans. And the, the question is, how does this, package get de deployed right. through uh, the channels that actually can access 
uh, small businesses. And a lot of this stuff is still being figured out. I mean, yes, the, the, the intent can be there, it comes down from the top, the very top uh, um, front of the government of the United States, but then it has to permeate down through all of the, the networks that touch the, the business. And there's a lot of uh, debate still happening there. And how do you qualify and who qualifies? And those small businesses that already have loans, do they get more of a loan? What, how does that all supplement? And do local banks just give out as many loans as possible and then do an audit of those in you know, three months or four months? It's, it's, it's difficult. And I don't think people have figured it out. And we're certainly, we haven't figured it out either, but you know, our, our, uh, our, our head of operations, our CEO, uh, are absolutely in the, the deep uh, weeds of this with our venture um, partners. And we're trying to try and figure this thing out. And as soon as we start to know more, uh, we'd be able to disseminate more uh, information. We are certainly not a financial institution. We do not make financial recommendations by any means, right. but there are certainly processes that we can at least help to set an expectation of uh, what we're experiencing and then, you know, other things on a by case basis. So I don't, don't want to yeah. say that we're, we're in any way being the conduit for this. We are not. Well, this has been great. Um, Tony, thank you so much for your time. Any last minute items that you'd like to share with the community? Um, you know, I said it, uh, it, you know, it's quite interesting. We, we, we looked at, you know, we're, we were very much a, uh, a small mid-sized business a CRM in the sense we, that's what the majority of our customers are. We've moved uh, very much into the higher, larger, uh, more sophisticated businesses. Um, and we monitor the pulse of the interest that's generated in that market. And the interest is still there. We, we've been prudent, obviously. We're, we're a profitable company. We're maniacal about how we operate our business. Uh, we, we care intently about our employees and we guard their, their interest in our business as well. Uh, so we're very, we're very um, uh, as I said, forensic, I guess, about how we think about how do we spend and what do we do moving forward in this environment. The demand is, the demand is still there in the market. And our pulling back has not seen a commensurate pullback uh, decline necessarily in, in interest. And that's not saying that people are signing checks by any means, but there's definitely, there's, there's, there's hope there, I guess is what I'm saying. People are yeah. still out there, they're still doing what they need to do. They're still thinking about their business. And the good news is we will come out of this at some stage, I guess, which is the, uh, which is the most important thing. And we all get a little bit down, I certainly do myself. <laughs> Because it's uh, you turn on the news and it's oh it's just it's awful, um, but I guess the the idea is we're we're going to come out of this at some stage and you know I do believe we'll come out of it out of it stronger uh, as well. So I would I would just keep keep our heads and uh, just you know think a little bit differently and, and see uh, see what we can learn.